Hello, which memory do you wish to access today? No problem, just walk through that door, please. The memory you're seeing right now is from October 4th, 2043. That's 40 years ago from today. It's a lovely day outside. The sun is shining and there are children running in the park. You can hear loud barks from dogs playing with their owners. The leaves on the trees have started falling, golden yellow and crunchy under your feet. You look at your watch. It's three in the afternoon. Your date should be here any minute now. Moments later, you hear the sound of crunched dry leaves coming up behind you. You turn around and there she is, the woman of your dreams. Not that you knew that yet. Today, in the year 2083, she's sitting right next to you on the couch, watching the same fond memory with a smile on her face in the house you've both been living in for years now. Just you two and your dog. Here in 2021, the best you can do when you want to relive old memories is play a video on your phone. You can't literally upload your memories online or even to a hard drive. Sure, you might dream about it or maybe watch a futuristic movie about it. Why would anyone even want to upload their brain? Probably one of the worst feelings there is is forgetting where you put something. Remember that one time when you were watching TV and your remote grew legs and ran off somewhere? It's happened to everyone. Under the couch, in the living room, under the TV. Where on earth is that remote? Here's what happened. You paused your show because you felt hungry. And when you were about to throw the remote on the couch, it dropped from your hand and you accidentally kicked it under the couch. You say, eh, I'll pick it up later. And you go about your life. Kitchen, hungry, sandwich, nice. You end up forgetting all about the remote just five minutes later. When you finally make your way back to the living room, you can't find the remote. Time to get on all fours and start the dreaded search mission. If you could only upload your memory of the past hour to your computer, or say a cloud account, you'd soon find out where that little guy ran off to. But what about going a step further? What if you could upload your memories and every single piece of information that's currently in your brain to a digital format? Forever sounds like a long time. And if your consciousness is uploaded to an immortal device, you might become immortal too. Seasons would go by endlessly and the world would change beyond recognition. A few thousand years from now, reality as we know it might be totally different. I'm talking flying cars, skyscrapers that pierce through the clouds, roads that loop around each other like a scene out of a sci-fi movie. Cities would have to be built underwater because there's no more space on land. Say hello to your neighbor, who is a shark. Being immortal means that you can watch your life go by like it's a TV show, except it never gets canceled. An infinite sitcom, and you're the star cast member. Forever. But then, would it still be you? Would you be in control of yourself? Or would the computer you got uploaded to dictate who you are? So you'd live forever, but would it be you or a copy of you that didn't know it was a copy? Ideally, you'd still be you, no changes at all, and you'd still control your own thoughts. The only thing that would change is that instead of living in an organism made out of skin and organs and stuff, you'd be living inside a network or a single hard drive. Does that make you artificial intelligence? Or are you still a living organism? It probably depends on if you get your actual brain somehow transplanted into a robot, or if your thoughts get downloaded onto a huge flash drive. We might all live together on a new planet called the internet, where virtual reality is reality. What would that look like? Days and nights would be a thing of the past. You spend every moment awake and active too. Since you don't have a body, there's no need to rest. Time is pretty much pointless. The internet's probably changed almost every second of your life. Now everything is touch, click, done. That's because technology has evolved and pushed itself more than we could have ever imagined. So maybe uploading our literal selves to a computer or the internet is not such a crazy futuristic idea. Scientists are looking at ways to do this right now. Loads of different worlds could be created for your pleasure if you ever get uploaded. If you like space and you've always dreamed about taking a spaceship to explore a new planet, you could. It would be just like those VR booths, but with no headset. Since your consciousness would already be there, all you'd need to do is walk through one of those thousands of doors and off you go on your new adventure. You open the door and a bright light shoots out, so bright it blinds you. As soon as you're able to open your eyes again, there you are in your new world. You're riding a spaceship to Jupiter, a spaceship filled with everything you've ever needed and desired. You've got a sweet tooth, so of course there's a cabinet filled with every possible candy imaginable. It seems like it goes on forever. Whatever you're in the mood for, just grab it and keep going back for more. There aren't cavities to worry about when you're totally digital. Everything else you need, right there. A pool? You got it. Your favorite restaurant? There it is. You want to invite your buddy to tag along? No worries. Send them an evite and they'll walk through the same door as you. Through the vast magnitude of space you go in your enormous spaceship with your buddy standing right next to you. If you're more into fantasy and you want to go to a land full of elves, well, that's also possible. It'd be like a video game filled with NPCs. But these guys won't just spit out a couple of pre-planned lines. They'll be fully equipped with the latest AI that's even capable of emotions. Imagine a vast land filled with elves and a whole bunch of other creatures. Picture minotaurs, people with cat ears and tails, even reptile people. Absolutely anything is possible. This land is in need of a hero. And you, who dropped out of nowhere, have come to save it. You're given superpowers based on your personality. If you love to swim, in this world, you can control water and make waves at will. So you can surf wherever you want to go. Love planes? Now you can fly. Love burgers? Eh, yeah, I got nothing. You start in beginner town, just like in every other fantasy RPG. And you get stronger as you go. At first, you can only throw a few jets of water. But as you set off on your adventure and get more practice, the sky's the limit. By the end of it, you'll be able to make entire rivers out of nothing and throw them around in any direction you want. If instead of action, you're just trying to relax, how about an island just for yourself? 
your own little Bahama getaway. There's a little tablet that allows you to control everything. Did you suddenly start missing the winter holiday season? Eh, that's okay. Just a few taps and seconds later, and there you go. Snow, decorations, holiday music, and best of all, no shoveling the driveway. How about a house in a volcano crater? Eh, don't worry, you can control the temperature, so the lava wouldn't be that hot. Your little wooden cabin right in the middle of the volcano is perfectly safe. You can have it float on the liquid hot magma, or levitate above it, whatever you want. The lava could act just like water, so it'd even be safe to dive in for a swim. Just switch on your imagination, pick a door, and have fun. To be the apple of one's eye. To have butterflies in your stomach. To fall head over heels. These are just some ways of saying we're falling in love. A feeling so overwhelming that it makes our hearts beat faster and our palms sweatier. And as much as we think that love is something that's happening in our hearts, actually, it's happening in our brains. Now here's Sarah. We'll follow her around to get a closer look into the science of love in our brains. Not stalking, just following. She's going on her first date with a guy she met on a dating app. She spent the entire evening trying to figure out what to wear. And when the time finally came to meet her date, she was feeling dizzy and her stomach was tingling. Most of us can relate to these feelings, which psychologists call anticipation. Anticipation. <laughs> Science explains that this is caused by our brain releasing a large amount of cortisol, also known as the stress hormone. The release of cortisol makes us get into a fight-or-flight mode. This means that if her date is 20 minutes late and they don't text Sarah with an explanation, she'll probably leave the restaurant as fast as she can. Dating can be tricky for our system because it's so uncertain. Will Sarah like Tom? They're both risking something by being here, but since no risk goes unacknowledged, falling in love triggers another part of our brain. This part is known as the awards and compensation area, or the ventral tegmental area, the VTA. When the VTA is triggered, we feel satiated and motivated. We activate the VTA when we eat something sweet and delicious, or when we quench our thirst. But there's a trick to it. It turned out that Tom didn't show up on their date, and Sarah felt rejected. At this moment, the VTA is highly active. This part of the brain is responsible for our cravings. And you know what they say, we want what we can't have. But Sarah tries again. She goes on another date and meets Dave. And they turn out to be a match. After a couple of dates, all Sarah can think about is Dave. Actually, she thinks about him about 80% of her waking hours, and this is very normal. According to behavioral neuroscientist Dr. Sandra Langslag, people in early love stages can think about their loved ones for up to 90% of their time. Yes, falling in love is like an obsession. This obsession is intensified when the VTA releases the feel-good neurotransmitter known as dopamine. Ooh, can't get enough of dopamine. At this moment, Sarah starts to feel euphoric and more drawn toward Dave. Everything about him pleases her. And for a moment, she believes she has found the perfect guy. Now, the reasons why Sarah and Dave click with each other can also be explained by brain chemistry. One of the reasons can be due to the so-called pheromones. Both parties can pick up on each other's pheromones, which are natural chemical signals that convey important genetic or even physical information. Basically, their brains understood that their genetics matched well together, which intensify the production of estrogen, in Sarah's case, and testosterone, in Dave's case. At this phase, they both tend to see each other as flawless. The rose-colored glasses phase happens because the part of the brain that is in operation talks louder than our prefrontal cortex, which hosts our ability for critical thinking. So we literally can't criticize our beloved. But this won't last forever. With time, Sarah and Dave start sharing intimate secrets and even a daily routine. They're entering a new phase of their relationship known as an attachment or compassionate love. At this moment, our brain starts releasing oxytocin and vasopressin, known as pair bonding hormones. They signal trust, feelings of social support, and attachment. They both feel safer in the relationship, and they also know they can count on each other to build a happy future together. In this way, romantic love is similar to other forms of love, as these hormones also help bond families and friendships. Now, here's a curious side effect of the release of oxytocin. Sarah has been having a hard time at her job, since her company is cutting down on half of the staff. Everyone in her company is afraid they'll get fired and people's stress levels are skyrocketing. But Sarah is managing to keep her stress under control. The fact that she's in a long-term committed relationship helps her feel calmer. And she owes all of this to the constant release of oxytocin by her brain. A 2019 research showed that strong romantic love bonds can make hardship more tolerable. The research asked 102 people to dive their hands into ice-cold water for a few minutes. And out of these participants, those who were in committed relationships appear to experience less stress or pain even those whose partners weren't beside them during the task. It was enough just to rely on a mental picture of their partners. Now, that's true love, huh? Some other weird things can happen when you're in love, like telepathy, for example. And I'm not joking, but researchers call it neurosynchrony, which means that couples tend to share similar thought patterns. Professor Zoe Donaldson, who conducted the study, says that the more a couple is connected, the more synchrony they can show. Another research also showed that couples can even synchronize their heartbeats when sleeping side by side. And no, it's not only us humans that fall in love and can experience the things we've been talking about. Some animals are proven to feel attachment bonds toward each other. For example, albatrosses keep coming back to the same partner their whole lives. They migrate all year round, but still come back to a repeated spot where they meet and greet each other once again. Now, it's normal that with time, the rose-colored glasses fade, and the prefrontal cortex can finally do its job. Judgment and critical thinking arise again, and both parties begin to see flaws in their beloved. Sarah doesn't like the way Dave always leaves his socks spread across the apartment, and Dave thinks Sarah watches too much Netflix. The thing is, sometimes these little things become too much, and the relationships may simply end. 
Surprisingly enough, breakups are also managed by the brain. Although Sarah thinks she did the right thing when breaking up with Dave, she feels something close to physical pain. That's because heartbreaks activate the insular cortex, a region of the brain that processes pain. But the insular cortex doesn't distinguish emotional pain from physical pain. So heartbreak can hurt as much as spraining your ankle. As the days pass, Sarah finds herself daydreaming about contacting Dave again. While cleaning up her house, she found some of the things Dave forgot to take with it. Sometimes the desire to reach out feels overwhelming, like extreme hunger or thirst. This happens because the VTA is being activated again, the motivation and reward center that drives feelings of longing, the same part of the brain that was activated at the beginning of their story together. This emotional whirlwind also activates Sarah's body alarm system, the stress axis, and since she is producing less oxytocin, it may seem difficult to handle everything she's feeling. It does get better, though. With time, the higher cortical region is activated. This region is responsible for overseeing reason and impulse control. It pumps the brakes on such irrational cravings, so the urge to text Dave will slowly fade away. This isn't Sarah's first breakup, and she knows she will be okay with time. Now, when she was younger, though, in her teen years, it was way harder to recover from a breakup. That's because the higher cortical region was still maturing, so teens tend to have fewer self-control mechanisms in situations such as these. Well, soon enough, Sarah will feel like meeting someone new, and once again, she'll hop on board this roller coaster ride we call love. Despite all our differences, we share one thing in common. That's right, we all feel alive and actively perceive the present in this very moment. But here's the catch, my friends. This feeling of right now is in fact a little delayed. It takes about half a second for our brains to translate information into our consciences. If you think about it, technically, the future is already done for, but we're just not realizing this in due course. And that's not all. Our different senses pick up information each at their own pace, which means our brains have to drag some of them to give us a seamless sense of the present. It's like our brains are trying to stitch together a Frankenstein monster of sensory information in real time and make it look pretty. But here's where things get really wild. Researchers have found that they can mess with this perception. When that standard delay is removed, our brains get confused, and it gives us the impression that the effect happened before the action that triggered it. It's like you'd perceive the doorbell sound, but before you'd actually push the button. Weird, right? Why are our brains so easily fooled? Well, it's because our conscious minds have a lot of work to do. We have to translate the world around us, think about what might happen in the near future, and figure out what to do next. All of that takes time, which is not great when you're facing fast-moving danger. Imagine a dangerous wild animal jumps out at you. If you have to consciously think about how to react, you're done for. Luckily, our brains have emergency response kits that kick in when we need them most. The startle reflex is the fastest response triggered by a noise or sudden movement. Within 5 milliseconds, a lot of muscles are triggered into reacting, and you're already on the move before you know it. If we have a few more milliseconds, our brains can act in a more interesting way. The amygdala, our brain's first stop shop for processing emotions, takes about 12 milliseconds to process a threat. It's not super sophisticated, but it can easily detect danger. In fact, some of our best actions are done without conscious decision making. Anything we do in less than half a second, like hitting a ball or catching someone's glance, is done automatically. So, while our conscious minds are great for long-term strategy, some of our best actions are accomplished without it. But let's get down to the real question. Thoughts can vary. Sure, we all know that because we've lived it. Making a difficult career or parenting choice takes a lot more thinking than choosing what to top your ice cream with. But did you ever wonder what the speed of thought is? I mean, do we need a Ferrari to keep up with our brains, or can we simply stick to a bicycle? Well, some scientists have tackled this tricky question by measuring how quickly we become aware of the information we gather through our senses. Apparently, we can detect stimuli that last as little as 50 milliseconds. That's about 1 20th of a second in case you're counting. Now, if we're talking about sensing and responding, let's use the sprinter reacting to the starting noise as a benchmark. That's lightning fast, taking only about 150 milliseconds. However, the speed of our nerve pathways can put a damper on our speedy thoughts. Back in the day, scientists estimated that it took 115 feet per second for information to travel down our nerves. But thanks to modern research, we now know that some well-insulated nerves can move at up to a whopping 394 feet per second. That's comparable to a bunch of the world's fastest cars in the world, like an Aston Martin or a McLaren. When you put it that way, the speed of thought is pretty quick. But don't worry, you don't have to train like an Olympian to keep up with your own brain. You might have even stopped to think about how many thoughts you have in a day. That question counts as a thought too, you know. Spoiler alert, it's more than you think. From the moment you wake up to the moment you fall asleep, and maybe even after that, your brain is constantly churning out thoughts. Some of these thoughts might be simple, like, I need to do laundry, or I should call my mom. Others might be more complex, like, what's the meaning of life, or how do we love? Believe it or not, a study conducted in 2020 found out that an average person has over 6,000 thoughts per day. That's a lot of thinking. The study used brain scans to track when new thoughts began while participants were either resting or watching a movie. But not all thoughts are created equal. Some thoughts can make us feel happy and excited, while others can bring us down and cause us to worry. For most people, those negative thoughts can be hard to shake. Also, did you know that your personality can affect how many thoughts you have? People who are a bit more on the jittery side tend to have more thoughts than those who are calmer. But don't worry, having a noisy brain doesn't automatically mean there's something wrong with you. Sometimes our brains can even produce intrusive thoughts that are disturbing or upsetting. 
While it's natural to have these kinds of thoughts occasionally, if they're happening frequently and disrupting your daily routine, it might be worth talking to a professional. So, where do all these thoughts come from? Your brain's nerve cells or neurons are responsible for communicating with other cells by generating neurotransmitters. This sets off a chain reaction of firing neurons, which then creates thoughts. But what if you want to change your thoughts? It's possible. Techniques like mindfulness and working with a trained specialist can help you address unwanted thoughts and give you a more relaxed state of mind. Our brains are somewhat similar to the muscles that help us move around. We can train it to make our lives better, to an extent that is. At the end of the day, it's not the number of thoughts that matters, but how they affect you and what comes out of them. Speaking of weird stuff brains can do, some mind-blowing news just hit the scientific community. Researchers have discovered some weird brainwaves in octopuses. Yes, you heard that right. These eight armed wonders feature a type of brainwave we've never stumbled upon in the animal kingdom. Now, before you go imagining little octopuses wearing tiny shower caps with electrodes sticking out, let me tell you how this discovery was made. Scientists surgically attached electrodes to octopuses' brains and were able to get a glimpse into their thought processes. The amazing project captured the first ever brain recordings of octopuses that can move around as they please, and the results are mind-bending. The researchers discovered that some of the brain wave patterns are much like some found in the human memory center. This suggests that convergent evolution may be at play here. What does convergent evolution mean, you might ask? It's when two different animals end up having the same trait, even though they don't share a recent common ancestor. Another similar example of convergent evolution is that of dolphins and bats. They both use sound to figure out where they are, but their environment couldn't be more different. Octopuses have been considered fascinating by scientists and non-scientists alike. From their remarkable memories to their ability to camouflage themselves, these creatures are nothing short of incredible. They've been known to use objects to solve problems, and they even dream. Yeah, you heard that right. The color ripples that we can see across their skin as they sleep can show us that they may be dreaming too. However, octopuses are notoriously difficult to study. They can touch every part of their body with those long arms, which means they may have no problem removing whatever tracking objects scientists might have placed on them.